live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle Modern Customer Experience 2017. Brought to you by Oracle. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events, and extract the signal from noise. Been here two full days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Peter Burris. Uh, Peter, really good to see Oracle really move from modern marketing experience, the old show name, to a cleaner, broader canvas called Modern CX, which is modern customer experience. And you're starting to see a, the new management, which took the baton from the old management, Kevin Ackeroy, um, Andrea Ward, who did a lot of work. I mean, they basically did a ton of acquisitions. We talked last year, if you remember, mm -hmm. Look, they have a data opportunity, and we spelled it right, in, right out there and said if they can leverage that data horizontally and then offer that vertical specialism with differentiation, they could have their cake and eat it too, meaning the pillars of solutions in a digital fabric with data. That's what they did. Yeah. They essentially did it. Yeah, they did. It's, and it's been, it's a, it was a, we came here hoping that, that that's what we would see, and that's what we saw, John. And, and uh, Oracle not only has access to a lot of data, but a lot of that first person data that really differentiates the business. Uh, information about your finances, information about your customers, information about orders. Uh, that's really, really crucial data, and it's not easy to get. And if you could uh, build a, uh, a strategy for your customers that says, let's find ways of bringing in new sources of data, leveraging that data so that we can actually help you solve and serve your customers better, you got a powerful story. That's a great starting point. And one of the things that I would observe here is that this event, the, the top story was Mark Hurd came down and talked to the customers uh, in the keynote and also made a cameo visit to the CMO, some of which they had separately. But really kind of basically putting it transparently out there. Look, we've got all this technology. Why are we spending all this technology and effort to get a 1% conversion rate on something that happens over here? Let's look at it differently. And I think the big story here is that Oracle puts the arc to the future which I think is a very relevant trajectory, certainly directionally correct, using data, and then you know, figuring out your process and, and implementing it, but really looking at it from a people perspective and saying, if you can use the data, focus your energies on that data to get new things going, and not rely on the old so much, make it better, but bring in the new. And I think that's the one thing that we need to see more from, from Oracle, in all honesty, at, shows, at this show and shows like this, uh, is that uh, and, and we've asked the question of a couple of guests, what exactly is modern marketing? Technology can allow a company to do the wrong things faster and cheaper. Uh, and in some cases that's bad, in marketing it's awful because more of the wrong thing amplifies the problem, that's how you take down a brand. You can really annoy the hell out of your customers pretty quickly. Well I think you made that point, interesting I thought, on that, just to reiterate that, validate that and amplify is that if you focus more on serving the business as a marketer versus now it's about the customer, okay, which is why I like the CX and I know you do too, you can create enterprise value through that new way versus, hey, look at team, I'm helping you out with some leads and whatever, support, content. Marketing now owns the customer relationship. Well, marketers talk about a persona all the time, John. They say, what's the persona? It's the stylized, uh, type of customer, and now with data we can make it increasingly uh, specific, which is very, very powerful. I think Oracle needs to do the same thing with the marketing function. What is that marketing function persona that Oracle is itself driving to, driving its customers to, and trying to lead the industry into? So I'd, I would personally like to see a little bit more about what will be the role of marketing in the future? What exactly is the modern, what exactly is modern marketing? What is the roadmap that Oracle has, not just for delivering the technology, but for that customer transformation that they talk about so much? They're, it's clear that they have an idea. I'd like to see it a little bit more public, because yeah. I think a lot of marketers need to know where they're going to end up. I was up. a bit skeptical coming in here today. I was a little nervous and skeptical. I like the team, know the people here, so, but I wasn't sure they're going to be able to pull this off as well as they did. I'd give them a solid letter grade of an A on this event. Not an A plus, because I think there's some critical analysis that's worth addressing, in my opinion. I think, um, in my opinion, Oracle's missing some things. It's not to their fault. I mean, they're only, they're only going as fast as they can. And I have to get your perspective too, but here's my take. Um, they don't know how to deal with video. That came up as a technical issue. But Jay Bear- But nobody really does. But nobody really does. And that's just, again, because we're in the video because it jumped out at me. But Jay Bear was on, who's, uh, who's hosted the CMO Summit. And he's 
he's out there too, like us. Content is a big thing, and I had didn't I haven't heard a lot about the content equation in the marketing mix. So if you look at the modern marketing mix, content is data. Well, and content is instrumental as a payload for, for email marketing, and we're in the content business, so we know a lot about the engagement side of it. So. I just don't see a lot of the engagement conversations that are happening around content. I just don't see that dots connecting. And I, and I think you're right, I think you're right, John. And, and part of the reason is that, again, I think Oracle needs to do a better job of articulating what this means. From our perspective, uh, and I'll, I'll, this is my perspective, but I, you agree, I'll put words in your mouth, is that marketing has to be a source of value to customers. Well, what do customers find valuable? They find information in easily digestible, consumable chunks as they go on their journey. What are those chunks? Those chunks, in fact, are content. So to tie this back and show how crucial this is, at the end of the day, consumers, businesses, need to learn about your brand, need to learn about best, best action, all that other stuff in consumable, interesting, valuable chunks, and it ultimately ends up looking like content. So you're absolutely right to talk about how this all comes together and show how the, that, that content is the mechanism by which a lot of this value is actually going to be delivered is really crucial. And okay, now to give the praise sandwich, as we say in Positive Coaching Alliance, two positives and then the critical analysis in the middle, that's the praise sandwich. So to give them some praise around the criticism, I will say that Oracle validates for me, and this is why I think they got a good strategy, that there's no silver bullet in marketing. Okay, there's no silver bullet. This product will get you more engagement. This will do that. They do show that data is going to be an integral part of creating a series of collections of silver bullets, of bullets, if you will, to, to create that value. And I think, I think that's, that's the key. And then the second praise is, this is kind of nuanced in their announcements, but the third party data support is a big deal in my mind. I want to expand more on that, I want to learn more about it, because when you have the first party data, which is very valuable, and access to more data sources, that becomes increasingly interesting. So the extensibility for getting content data or other data can come in through third party. I think that opens the door for Oracle to innovate on the area we gave them criticism on. So, so I think that's a positive trend. I think that's a good outlook on having the ability to get that third party data. Yeah, but it's also going to be one of the places where Oracle's going to have to compete very, very aggressively with some other leaders who are a little bit more oriented towards content. Uh, at least some of their marketing clouds a little bit more content oriented. I'm comfortable Oracle will get there because let's face it, at the end of the day, marketing's always done a pretty good job of created, creative. Using data to figure out what creative to use or create is nice, very important, but what we're really talking about is customer experience where the customer gets something yeah. out of every interaction and while content's crucial to that, the end result is ultimately is the customer successful? And Oracle's showing a better play for that. So I'll give you, I, I think I like the way you did it on the grading. I'll, I'll give them a B plus, and I, and, and, uh, but, but I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I think we saw A talent here, we saw an A minus story, and they're year in. So there's still some work that needs to be done, but there's clearly. It's, so I you give weighed them, it as a B plus. I give it, yeah, I give them an A yeah. on a vector, and uh, where they're going, uh, and, I would agree and, with and that. the feedback that we've gotten from the customers walking the show floor, is there's a lot of excitement, a lot of positive energy. The other thing that I would say. Uh, well, the band was, I'd give the band not, I mean, the band was a B minus. <laughs> yeah, that takes was, it, that's going to kill the curve. What was the band last <laughs> I night? I don't even remember, we missed the good one. I know that Don and I, we had dinner, so we came late. Because it was a good band, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, a, like Maroon 5, or One Republic, or Imagine Dragons, or U2. You know, or one of the big you know. ones, <laughs> Sting, <laughs> C minus. Um, but the, the, the other thing that I think is really important is, uh, at least as it pertains to modern customer experience, is that they are, uh, they, they are absolutely committed to the role that data is going to play. And we talked about that right at the front. But they are demonstrating a deep knowledge of how data and data integration and data flows are really going to impact the way their customers' yeah. businesses operate. And I think that there were a couple of, uh, couple of, I'll give a really high point, and one that I want to hear more about in terms of the, the interviews that we had. Great high point was when uh, we talked a lot about data science and how data science technologies are being productized. Uh, and uh, that we heard, for example, that Oracle's commitment to its marketplace is that they are going to ensure that their customers can serve their customers' customers 
with any request within 130 milliseconds anywhere in the world. That's a very, very powerful statement that you can only really make if you're talking about having an end-to-end -end, uh, role over or influence well, like over we, how we things commented, work. That's a good point. We commented that this end-to-end -end architecture is going to be fundamental. If you read the tea leaves and look at other things happening, like at Mobile World Congress, Intel, I think, is a bellwether on this with 5G because they have to essentially create this overlay for connectivity as well as network transformation to do autonomous vehicles, to do smart cities, to do, to do smart home, all these new technologies. Going, it's an end-to-end -end IP architecture, it's connected devices. So they're super smart to make, have this connected data uh, theme, which I think is relevant. But the other one, Ron Kuberser has talked about this evolution. And I find something interesting, I want to get your reaction to this statement. So Ron was kind of talking about, oh, it's an evolution, we've seen this movie before, okay, great. But when you talk to Marta um, Federici, who was a customer Royal Phillips. from Royal Phillips, great interview. she's head of CRM, now she's doing some other stuff. So okay, head of, what does CRM mean? So uh, you know, if you take evolution, what the customers are doing, Time Warner uh, and Royal, it's interesting. Certain things are becoming critical infrastructure and other things are becoming more dynamic and fluid. So if you believe in evolution, these are layers of innovation, so stuff can be hardened as critical infrastructure, say like email marketing. So I think that what's happening here is you're starting to see some hardening of some critical infrastructure, AKA marketing technology, MarTech stack, maybe some consolidation, ad tech kind of comes together. Certain things are going to be hardened and platformized. Well, let's take, let's take the word hardened and change it, because I, I know what you mean. It's, let's say it's codified. Now why is that why is that little distinction a little bit, a uh, little bit interesting? Is because the more codified it gets, the more you can put software on it. The more you can put software on it, the more you can automate it. And now we're introducing this yeah. whole notion of the adaptive intelligence, where as we start to see marketing practices and processes become increasingly codified, what works, what doesn't work, what should we do more of, what should we do less of, where should we be spending our time in innovating versus where should we just be doing it because it's a road activity at this point in time? That's where introducing this adaptive intelligence technology becomes really interesting because we can have the adaptive technology elements yeah. handle that deeply codified stuff where there really is not a lot of room for invention and give the more interesting, ongoing yeah. cool. customer engagement, customer uh, experience. Right on, I think, and I think we should challenge Oracle post-event and keep an eye on them on this adaptive uh, intelligence app uh, concept because that is something that they should ride to the sunset because that is just a beautiful positioning and if they can deliver the goods on that, they say they have it, we'll, we'll expand on that. That's going to give them the ability to do, churn out a ton of apps and leverage the data. But to the codified point you're making, here's my, here's my take. One of the things that I hear from customers in marketing all the time is a lot of stuff is, oh yeah, mobile first, all that stuff, but still stuff's web presence based. So you got all these coded URLs, you got campaigns running 10 ways from Sunday, DNS is not built to be adaptive and flexible, so it's okay to codify some of those systems and say, look, we just don't tinker with these anymore. They're locked and loaded, you build on top of it, codify it, and make that data the enabling technology. Without it that. becoming a new inflexible legacy. Yeah, I can't say, hey, uh, let's just tweak the hardened infrastructure to run a, uh, an A-B test on a campaign or do something. No, no, you set this codified systems, you harden them, you put software on top of them, and you make it a subsystem that's hardened, and that's kind of what I mean. Right, and that, right, right, that's right. where the market will go, because let's face it, I mean, the systems aren't that intelligent to handle a lot They're of marketing. They're still computers. They're still computers. You know, it's, it, people are running around just trying to fix some of this spaghetti code in marketing. And right. as the marketing department gets more IT power, hey, you own it, they're owning it now. So, you know, <laughs> don't be afraid what you wish for, you might get it, right? right so right, now right. they own the problem. Right, so right. I think Oracle on the services side has a huge opportunity to do what they did with Time Warner. Come into the marketer and saying, hey, we got that for you. And that's what Herd's kind of subtle message was on his keynote. Hey, we're IT pros, but by the way, you don't need to be in the IT business to, to do this. We can fix your problems and roll out this process. Yeah, we're going to talk to you in your language, and your language is modern customer experience, which is one of the reasons why they got to be more yeah. aggressive. And by the way, stating and what we mean have all the data in our data cloud and all right. the first party data in our Oracle right. databases. Right. Right. Exactly that system right. of record becomes the crown jewel. Right. Oracle has a lock spec on the table. Do you think it's a lock spec? Uh, no, and that's exactly why I think they need to articulate where this is all going a little bit. They have to be a leader in defining what the future of marketing looks like, so they can make it easier for right. people to move forward. Putting to you on the spot, what do you think a modern marketing looks like, So an organization? We talked about this, and the answer that I gave, and I'll evolve it slightly, because we had another great guest, and I thought about it a little bit more, is uh, uh, the, the, a, a brand continuously and always delivers customer value. 
always. And one kind of, of cliche-ish. Kind of cliche. -ish, Dig into it. But modern marketing is Unpack focused that. on delivering customer value. How? If they deliver, well, that, for example, the, the when the customer has a moment in a journey of uncertainty, you your brand is first to the table with that content that gets them excited, gets them comfortable, on a progression. makes them feel to move, ready to move forward. Yeah. That you're, and this is, a, I was going to, well, I'll yeah. make another point in a second. And, uh, and, and I would even say that, that we might even think about a, a, a new definition of the funnel at the risk of bringing up that old artifact. A historical funnel I went agree. to sale. Now we can actually start thinking about what's that funnel look like to customer success. Well, there's two funnel dynamics that are changing. This is important, I think. This is going to be um, one of those moments where Wow, the cube actually unpacked a major trend, and I believe it to be true. The vertical funnel is collapsed, and now the success funnel is not done. It's not baked. Not baked, or not, not is decimated from this perspective of if the sale is the end game of the funnel, pop out, it, that's over. Your point is, it's kind of like venture funding for a startup. That's when the, the start line begins. Right. So here, it's okay, we got a sale, but now we have instrumentation to take it all the way through the life cycle. And you know, John, that's a great way of thinking about it. That in many respects, when you're dealing, when you when you introduce a customer to a new solution that has complex business implications, that you are jointly together making an investment in something, and you both have yeah. to see it through. I mean, sales guys put investment proposal on the. That's um, exactly right. And so I think increasingly, so I would say modern marketing, modern marketing comes down to customer success. And the prediction I'll make for next year is that this session is called the, is, you know, we'll call it the modern marketing, modern customer experience show, but the theme is going to be customer success. It's here's what, here's what I'm going to do, here's what we're going to do this year, Peter. We're going to, we will, based upon this conversation of which we're riffing in real time as we analyze and summarize the event, we, I will make it my mission, and you're going to work with me on this as a directive. <laughs> we're going to interview people, we're going to pick people that are truly modern marketing great. executives. That's great. We're going to define a simple algorithm that says this is what we think a modern marketing executive looks like, and we're going to interview them, we're going to do a story on them, and we're going to start to unpack, because I think next year we should be coming here saying, we actually did our work on right, this. Right, right, we figured out, We figured out that a modern marketing organization and an executive behave and look this way. Right, I think it's a great idea. And I think so I'll give you one more thought, because right. I, I know you like this, this one too. Uh, Doug Kennedy, the partner, oh, uh, conversation yeah. that we Very had. good. Um, talk, uh, you know, clearly an a, a grade A executive, seven weeks into the job, but that is going to be, we're, we're, you know, for this whole thing to succeed, he's got a lot of work in front of him. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how, over the course of time, this show okay. and other Oracle shows evolve. <laughs> Look, I have a lot of partner experience, you do too. He's got a zillion years under his belt. He's a pro. He did not have any deer in the headlights look for seven weeks in the job. He's been there, he's done that. He knows the industry, he's seen the uh, cycles of, of change, he's ridden waves of innovation up and down. And I think Oracle has a huge opportunity with his new program, and that is Oracle knows how to make money. <laughs> okay, Oracle knows how to price things, they know how to execute on the sales side and go to market, and partners relationships are grounded in trust and profitability. And I would say profitability first, <laughs> and trust second, and it's kind of a virtuous circle. But John, they got to start getting grounded in customer experience, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. That, and that's, that's not, it's, not it's, it's, it's doable, but it's going to be a challenge. Well, we talked about swim lanes with his interview, and I thought that was interesting. If you look at Accenture, for instance, Deloitte, PwC, and, and all the different players, they're picking their swim lanes with their core competencies, and that's what he was basically saying, and they're going to look for core competency. Now, I think they're not there yet, these the major SIs and, and potential partners. So, He's going to have to put a, the spec out and put the bar there and say, this is what we got to do. But you got to make the channel serve the customer. It has to be profitable and it has to be relevant. And the only danger to strategy, I would say, is the co-selling thing is always dicey. Especially if one has customer experience it, as a primary. It requires issue, equilibrium in the ecosystem. You got it, you got it. <laughs> it and, 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 and also, it's a multi-partner yeah, go to market. It's it, not just one or two now. So he's going to have to really spread the love at the same time, have us you know, harden rules, stick to his knitting on that one. Okay, Peter, final word. What do you, bottom line of the show, encapsulate uh, the show into a bumper sticker? Well, we heard uh, Amazon release today, Google release today, beat their numbers. Two companies that are trying to build an ecosystem 
from their core of the cloud. Uh, and the question is, is Oracle, who has customers with applications and with that first person data, are they going to be able to cloudify, sorry for using that word, but are they going to be able to gain that trust that this new operating model they're really committed to for the future before Amazon yeah. and Google can accrete applications to their platform? Because Oracle has the end-to-end -end advantage right now. And in the world where digital's important, speed's important, the fidelity of the data is important, the mm -hmm. customer experience is important. That end to end has a window of opportunity. Yeah, and I would also add two other companies reported, Microsoft and Intel and MIST. So you have Amazon and Google, new guard, newer guard, old guard, Intel, Microsoft, Oracle is considered old guard even though they have some modernization going on from CX in the cloud. But Oracle is cloud 100% in the cloud. Their SAP, for instance, is going multi-cloud. So the wild card in all this is, if the multi-cloud game evolves. Think end to end, end to end, because that has advantages. When you're, exactly. talk, when you're talking data, yeah. for one of the things that, that Jack Berkowitz said, uh, he said, you know why we can hit that 150 millisecond target? Because they don't have to move the data around. Sometimes we don't have to move the data. This is going to be very interesting, and this is going to be fun to watch and participate. Of course, the Cube we're covering, Oracle Open World, will be there again this year. Um, we don't have the exact specifics on that, but certainly if you're, uh, Interested in checking us out, we're siliconangle.com. Peter's research is at wikibon.com as well as siliconangle on the front page. Siliconangle.tv is all the videos. And we will be documenting and following the modern marketing experience with people and companies and documenting that on theCUBE and on SiliconANGLE. So that's a wrap from day two at Oracle Modern CX. Thanks for watching.